I think it was the very first demonstration of the Rocky Mountain Smiths that I ever intended. That was probably well over 30 years ago, but there was somebody there who had this really neat walking cane axe. Had an axe head, but the shaft was long enough to be used as a cane. I think it had a spike, but it was just something that has stuck with me and I've always wanted to do one. After doing some internet research, it looks like they were fairly common Eastern European type of a tool, possibly also used as a weapon. I've seen them referred to as a walking axe, a shepherd's axe. I think Velasqua is one of the terms I've seen. And I suppose, depending on what country you're in, they probably have different names. I've actually jumped back in time. This video is about making the head that I have in my hand here. And we'll get pretty close to this point in this video. Then there'll probably be a part two, maybe a part three, to finish the entire project. But I want to put some extra care and attention in this and not just whip it out and try and get it all done for one video. So let's jump into the video and take a look at how I made the head for my walking stick or shepherd's ax. I'm going to start with a piece of 4140. It's one and a quarter inches square. So that's about 30 millimeters square. A hair over four inches long. That's about 105 millimeters long. This just happens to be something that I had laying out there. I didn't cut it special. Just going to see how this works out. They say I'm just guessing here that's two and a half inches from one end. I've never made one of these. So we'll see what it comes out like. So we'll heat that up and then I'll deepen my center punch mark until I've got something I can get a, the nose of a round punch into and that'll help line this up much better. This should start the eye nice and centered and it's way better to take the time and do the layout and guarantee your results than it is to get it off and then try to fix it. Turning this in for end helps take out any error you're putting in here if your punch isn't going quite straight and it makes for a straighter hole in the long run. This punch is 4130, so it needs to be cooled regularly in use. I'm also alternating which side I work from every other heat. A little bit of coal dust will help keep the punch from sticking in the hole, or you can use a commercial product like this punch lube from Quick and Dirty Tool Works. So there's our hole all the way through just a starting place and this is all the slug we have punched out of that hole. That's all the material we lost. Next I'm going to start drifting this using the same tapered round punch to enlarge the hole. And I'll simultaneously work on drawing out the sides of the eye and thinning that out while the punch is in there. There are lots of different ways to create an eye for something like a hammer or an axe or an adze or any other tool that needs an eye. And we've looked at quite a few of those in past videos. I think one of the most precise methods is actually to drill a little hole on either end of where you want the eye in and then punch out the material in between. That helps guide your punch and also makes punching the hole just a little bit easier because there's less material to punch out. Punching a round eye like we're doing today and then drifting it out will bulge the sides out. When you flatten those sides, you end up with an oval eye, and that's really what I'm going for. You can also punch it with an oval punch, lots of different options. This is just the way I chose to do it today because I'm working by hand at the anvil. If I were doing it under the power hammer or the fly press or the hydraulic press, I might choose a different technique. And if my drill press in the shop were working, I might have drilled the holes.
Now hopefully you can see that hole is considerably larger than it was to start with. I'm going to keep stretching it out a little bit. Now in this video I'm trying to illustrate that you can do this by hand at the anvil. And you certainly can. The truth is, I would use a power hammer at least to finish drifting this. But we'll continue to do it at the anvil just to show that it is possible. Well that's pretty much the end of the round section of that punch, but I think this eye needs to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and find another drift, and we're going to keep going. I think I'll leave the eye there for now and go ahead and fuller the transition between the eye and the blade and the eye and the pole or spike. I haven't really decided which way I'm going to go yet. Again, this is something that would be quite efficiently done under a power hammer or a hydraulic press. This might take just one heat using either one of those tools. But it can be done this way, so don't think you have to own those tools to do projects like this. I just want to put a single fuller where the blade transitions into the eye on the underside. So I put a little flat plate in the guillotine tool and I'll only be fullering from that one side. Well, I've been at this for about three hours now, not even 11 o'clock, and it's already about 100 degrees in the shop. We've also been getting a lot of smoke blowing in from the wildfires on the west coast. So working hard, getting your heart rate and your respiratory rate up probably isn't the best idea with the air quality. And I'm starting to feel it a little bit, starting to burn a little bit, eyes are starting to water. So I'm going to go inside where it's cooler, the air is cleaner, and find something else productive to do for the rest of the day. 
For me, I'll get back to this tomorrow morning. For you, it'll be just a minute. Taking an extended break when things aren't favorable in the shop is a great opportunity to go online and learn something new. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of classes to choose from for creatives of all sorts. There are classes on Skillshare that will probably help you out. Personally, today I want to look at classes in getting better audio and editing audio. A lot of times when we're doing audio in the shop, there's a little bit of background noise and things that are kind of distracting, but I don't really want to edit out the vocals or the part where I'm trying to narrate the video, and I need to be able to kind of balance that stuff, so I thought I'd look for some classes on Skillshare that would help. And the wonderful thing about it is, because I'm a Skillshare member, I can watch as many of these classes as I want to, and I can watch them as many times as I want to, to make sure I really learn the information. So that's a wonderful opportunity. And for the first thousand people to use the link in the video description, you can receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Well, it's a little bit cooler in the shop this morning. Unfortunately, the air quality is worse today. So it's probably gonna be another short day in the shop. I can still kind of feel some of the crud in my sinuses and my throat from working hard yesterday. So I'm probably not gonna to do too much today, but hopefully we can finish roughing out this ax head. Then tomorrow, do some grinding. The first thing I wanna do is clean up the transition from the fuller to the part that'll be the blade or the part that'll be the spike. You end up with kind of a crisp corner there and it's easy to push that over into the fuller and create a cold shut. So I want to knock that corner off before I start drawing out those elements. I think for this I'm just going to go with a kind of a hammer pole and this is a perfect opportunity to go ahead and get that roughed out. That will also allow me to get a better fit with a pair of tongs as I work on the other end. Now I can drift that eye into more of an oval shape and try and straighten things out.
It'll need more work later, but I want it to be close. Now it's time to start drawing out the blade. Well, this is turning into one of those projects that I think is going to have to be saved by the grinder. The mass is all in the right places, but it's not very even and it's kind of ugly. But I do think it can be done. I just want to make sure it's straight and that the eye is as good as I can get it. Although that ended up a little bit crooked when I went to the oval drift. So there again, a die grinder on the inside might be the way to go. Earlier I commented that I would probably do all of this under the power hammer if it were just me and I wasn't making a video for you to watch and I certainly stand by that statement. I wish I had just gone to the power hammer. 4140 is hard stuff to forge by hand. If you don't have a power hammer, what's the trick then? Make it out of mild steel, 
curf the edge of it, and then forge weld in something with higher carbon that you can harden. That's a perfect place to use some of those leaf springs you've been piling up out in the yard. But we are going to get this done. It is possible to do this by hand in the 4140 at the anvil, but it's probably going to take me three times longer than if I had done this out of mild steel and forge welded it, and maybe four or five times longer than if I had just gone to the power hammer. I'm going to bring this up to heat one more time, then I'm going to bury it in vermiculite to let it anneal. That will make it as soft as it can possibly get. Then we'll do some grinding, filing, whatever it takes to kind of clean it up and see what I've got at that point. But like I say, the mass is all there and everything we need to make this a successful project is there. Just not coming out as clean right off the anvil as I would like it to. This is what you would call a rough forging. It's certainly rough, but the material is in the right place to get what I want. It's far from finished and I'm going to do a fair amount of grinding on it. For one thing, this is a walking stick type axe. So this is kind of a cane handle and this is not comfortable in my hand. I need to take a a lot of material out in here. I want to keep as much of the blade here as I can, but I want something that's comfortable to hold on to. I'll also round this off a fair amount. Now this is not based on any exact historical example. I'm using a concept, not a design. This will be more of a unique piece instead of a reproduction or a copy of something I've seen. Maybe later I'll try and do more research and see if I can find whatever the more common pattern has been for these. And I'm not sure there really is a standard other than it should be comfortable to hold on to if you're going to use it like a walking stick or a cane. So I need to do a little layout, get an idea of what I want this blade shape to look like. Then I'm going to take it to the grinder and I'm going to grind this. You could certainly trim it with an angle grinder and a cutoff disc if you want to. Grind it all with an angle grinder and a hard wheel. Or even cut it hot. But since this is already cold and I don't have the forge going today, I'm going to go ahead and just take it to the grinder. Well, I think you get the idea where I'm going with the grinding on this project. I'm not going to make you watch all of that. I want to take this down to a completely smooth finish, 
all the way up to 220 grit. And I thought originally with this video, I would try to go from beginning to end, get a handle on this, but I don't want to rush this. I've got some other things I'd like to do, some ornamentation, a little bit different way of mounting the handle than what I've done in the past. And I think that deserves at least one more video. It's, it's possible that the ornamentation, hardening, tempering will be all of part two of this video. And then doing the handle the way I want to do it might end up being a part three. But I suspect I've already exceeded the attention span of about 70% of you, and they've already quit watching the video. So for those of you who stick it out to the very end, I really appreciate it. It actually makes a difference on how well these videos perform. In any case, we're going to get back to this project next week for part two. I hope to see you for that video, and I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you next week.